Once again, welcome you all. I heartily welcome each and every participant for joining with us today in the seminar, a webinar. So it gives me immense pleasure in delivering the keynote address for the forthcoming webinar sessions. Conventions and connotation in English language help us to understand any culture and society and communicate in a better way. Literary genre is the most important element of any writer's craft. In every literary and non-literary writing, it is the genre that governs and shapes a language, its style, form, and address within the literary tradition. There are different conventions and connotations to explain each genre in English literature and English language teaching. In today's world, effective use of English language help us in our interpersonal relationships at home and at work. As with anything in life, there are positive and negative ways of using a language. We should always use by its appropriateness. The series of lectures which we are about to listen will examine a range of texts drawn from different genres in English literature uh, right from uh, mastering the reading skills uh, today's session sir will be uh, teaching us about the some of the nuances and mastering of the reading skills and children's literature to feminist thoughts so it would identify and explore the terms by particular genres or designated and literary traditions are built let me at the outset share the privilege of introducing the guest speaker of today's session Dr. Genga Mehto, we welcome your august presence, sir, on behalf of the Department of English, Government Arts College, Parman, Nandanam, Chennai. Welcome you, sir. Most hearty welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Genga Mehto. Thank you, sir. sir uh, Dr. Genga Mehto is an assistant professor in English, Department of Social Science and Humanities, Regional Institute of Education, NCRT Bhopal. Dr. Mehto has a strong academic profile with both net and SLED qualifications. He has obtained his doctorate from Ranchi University on regionalism in the major works of uh, R.K. Narayanan. His teaching expertise include English language teaching in virtual classrooms through social networking, language skills, and soft skills. He is the trainer for educators of primary, secondary, and senior secondary levels of various schools like KV, JNV, DAV, DPS on classroom management and English language teaching. Apart from classroom and online content development, he has published and presented several research papers in conference, seminars, symposium, both at national and international levels. He is at present working on a series of small books on the development of English language skills for the students of higher classes and teachers. 
His first book entitled Master Your Reading Skills is in the process of uh, process of print. He has also penned some poems and short story. He is awarded for excellence by various education departments for his contribution to education on for rendering social service. His expertise and use of online tools such as Google Classroom and Edmodo online learning tools for the upliftment of rural graduates of Bihar must be placed in records. Thank you so much, sir, for having accepted our invitation and coming forward to share your valuable thoughts and ideas on mastering the reading space. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, Sandhya, ma'am. So I think uh, she has given a detailed, like, exhaustive introduction about me. I don't deserve that. Uh, uh, good morning, all. Welcome you all to today's uh, uh, presentation on master reading skills. As uh, Sandhya, ma'am, has already introduced, I'm working on uh, this. Uh, this is one of the first books that I'm going to publish. Uh, the series of books are to come. So, of course, I do have a lot of uh, studies on and research on master reading skills and reading skills that I'll be sharing today. Uh, one class will be uh, not sufficient for this kind of thing, but I'll try to sum up since I got only one class to do with you. I'll try to sum up in brief whatever things I, am in, I have included in the book and what things you should be uh, looking forward to when you try to develop your reading uh, you know, skills. I think let me share the slides with you so that it becomes easier for you to look at the screen and um, you know, uh, you know, listen to me. Let me share the screen. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah. I think the screen is there, so should I? One minute. I think I'll manage with the PowerPoint presentation that, presentation that is here. Um, is the screen uh, visible to you all? Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it. Also, uh, it's called Master Reading Skills. And uh, we start uh, talking about how to master reading skills. Let me just talk about reading. Uh, I think most of us take reading for granted and think that reading, you know, uh, once you have learned the alphabets, you start reading and there is nothing to master. You take reading casually. Reading has a lot of complicated thing, a lot of skills, uh, sub skills that allow you to uh, you know, read better. I'll be talking about them. But uh, reading is uh, meaning uh, making. So it's a process of making uh, meaning from unfamiliar authentic text, you know, it should not be uh, any text that you read in the books and read it again. Once you read something, that means it enables you to read something beyond the textbook as well, something beyond the classroom as well. Text should be authentic, which you use in your daily -day life, and when new text comes, you should be able to make meaning out of that. Then it becomes successful. Then uh, it has a silent reading activity. So, like once you speak aloud, it becomes a different activity. So you have to decode the meaning, decode the message of the writer very silently. Then there should be a reasonable speed. I think I'll talk about that a lot in the next slides. What should be the reasonable speed at which you should be able to read? And there should be sufficient comprehension. You should be able to understand the message sufficiently. If not all the masses, if not 100% comprehension, if not 100% understanding, at least 70 to 80% understanding is minimum required for making a reading successful. Uh, it enables the learners, uh, if you are working more on reading skills, you will be able to read better and faster. 
you will be able to absorb or understand the difficult text you will be able to recall uh, that's also part of reading what you have been uh, what you have read uh, and you will use them in your real day to day life so these are some of the basic aspects that you have to deal with now types of readers there are many types of readers that you come across there are bibliomaniac people who have obsession of collecting books they they are so obsessed with collecting books that there there is abnormal psychological behavior in them mostly they deal with collecting books only they are not good readers they are good collectors and they even put danger to others life and their life in order to collect books so i don't like this kind of people then you have bibliophiles who like collecting as well as reading books and then you have bookworms who have uh, nothing to do collecting but they may collect but they are more into reading and there is a negative aura with book walks that they are not very active in outside world they are very active in reading only then there are common readers who don't have much to read just to read for passing the examination then you have active readers who read and uh, you know read for information then there are for many purposes for reading uh, Uh, it's an entertainment. Uh, mostly, when you read novels, you read stories. You read for entertainment. Then you read for information. When you read newspapers, read magazines, read uh, read information given on the online news. They are all for the, for the purpose of information. Then you read for knowledge. When you read textbooks or other academic books, you read that for gaining knowledge and understanding the world. Then persuasion. You read to to be able to convince others to have data to have uh, uh, you know some other information which you can use to convince others. Then there are a few components. Ah, uh, this is very necessary for a few components for reading. The first one is phonemic awareness. You should be able to uh, read those series of uh, letters there and read them as words. Combining those phonemes into words is basic requirement. Then you need to have vocabulary, word stock. Then to have certain comprehension power, you should be able to understand them related to your previous knowledge that you have already read about the world. And then you have you should have fluency, which deals with how fluent you are in reading, how good you are at reading. Then uh, we have uh, different types of reading. Two different types of reading are discussed. One is allowed reading. The other is silent reading. You should understand that allowed reading is a physical activity. It's a physical process. And when you vocalize the text, when your vocal cords, your uh, organs of the speech, that is allowed reading. Allowed reading is, uh, in other words, a speaking activity. It is not reading activity at all because your most uh, your your attention most uh, most of the time your attention is to read them as words and not to understand it. So it's a, a physical activity which is uh, mostly speaking activity. The real reading activity is a silent reading, which is a mental process. You look at the text and you try to understand the message given in the text. That's silent reading. Then the Two processes of reading. One is intensive; the other is extensive. Intensive reading is used for a smaller text, uh, for detailed understanding. You read a small paragraph, a small passage, the passage that you find in reading comprehension text or other places. So, a small passage or a small text, if you read very carefully in detail, that's intensive reading. Then you have some extensive reading where you don't need to understand. Uh, yeah, in intensive reading, you need to understand each and every detail. Or uh, you need to be very very careful at, to understand maximum information. In extensive reading, you don't need to understand everything. You can have a global comprehension where you understand overall gist of the thing, and then you proceed. It is used for reading longer text like, like novels, stories, or similar, you know, books, biographies, or biographies, and all. Then there are two techniques that I'll be talking about. Uh, one is skimming, the other is scanning. Skimming is used for quick reading of the whole text. So you have the text, and you quickly glance through, and you try to get the gist out of it. When 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 we search something in Google and try to find out which content is suitable for you, you type, you search in Google with certain keywords in your mind that you are looking for some information. And once you have many uh, you know options listed, yeah, and you have to select the one. So you. Skim through the text, skim 
skim through the content of uh, at different uh, you know you know given by different different websites and then you decide which one is suitable for you that's the skimming so quickly looking at the text to decide which one is correct or get the best basic information then you have a scanning when you look for some particular information you have certain keywords in your head and you are looking for those words uh, uh, that is kind of scanning for example uh, you have uh, you uh, come across a new word in uh, while you're reading and you are looking for that word in the dictionary that's a scanning so you will go to the particular page find the find the word uh, scan through the text or you are looking for some information in the mobiles you know maybe contact list or something like that so when you scan you have some particular piece of information in mind that you are looking for and then you want to find that that's scanning then there are two approaches a top down and bottom up in top down approach uh, your schema or uh, your you know previous knowledge works and you apply that previous knowledge to understand from the whole to the basic board so it's approach from going from broad level concept to narrow level context from your knowledge which the knowledge of the world to a smaller text that is given uh, for reading that is a top-down approach and then you have bottom approach when you go from the specific to the whole but from a small or narrow to the bigger one here you start with for names analysis of words prefixes suffixes uh, roots understanding words from word level you go to phrases well when you try to understand a phrase then you try to understand sentence then you try to understand paragraph so this is a kind of bottom up approach where you start from narrow and go to big so bottom approach from small to big analysis of words to the bigger text so they, these are the two approaches then if we do not have sufficient comprehension i think someone has switched on the audio so if uh, someone can mute people uh, there is a uh, uh, noise in the background so rupana ma'am and the management team if you can yeah done there are reasons for the lack of comprehension when you are reading it, it happens many a time that you have read the page and by the time you reach the end of the page you understand you you conclude that you have not understood the thing and then you go back and uh, try to read it again kind of back track, tracking or something kind of uh, thing but you have less comprehension you don't understand things there may be many reasons for that there may be physical reasons you have not slept well or you have muscular strain and your body is too engaged to solve those things and your mind is diverted then you have mental strain your mind or your daydreaming there is some something has happened at home or somewhere with the friends and you are too worried about that that may be the reason for not comprehending the text then maybe textual uh, you know reasons the text may be either very difficult or very new for you or uninteresting for you so you are not uh, you know able to focus on that maybe if you, if you are a, maybe a, a plus two level and, and if i give you a text of master's level to read the text will be challenging for you and you won't be able to comprehend or your previous knowledge is zero and you don't have any technical vocabulary related you won't be able to understand them and the most important reason may be that you don't have proper reading skill or habit improper reading skill lead to less comprehension and so developing proper reading habit is also very much relevant here i'll be talking some of these reading skills in today's uh, session uh, you need to start with uh, finding active reading time in order to build up concentration and have complete understanding when you can focus more on reading everyone has his or her own time when the post can focus most of them can do it early in the morning some can do in the afternoon lunch uh, during lunch time or some of them can do in the evening some of them can do before bed time so you find out what is the best suitable time for you to read and then accordingly find that time and on that time for your reading is reading you know activity some people can even find a good time to read in the trains in the journey maybe at the airport or somewhere so you also find out where you can focus more <clears throat> and accordingly find out certain time uh, you know set aside a certain time for a reading activity during that time when you can focus more then if you have to prepare a reading space it is very much required to prepare it give it a nice feeling so that you can consider it better 
on the place where you can focus more in the hall in the study room on the bed on sofa you find out where you want to curl on the sofa or lie on the bed or sit in the study room or sit in the hall where you can focus more then uh, find out this then look what are the things you can see around are there distracting things that, that may help you not focus or something so arrange for the things that you can see around look for the sound what the music what are the music uh, uh, you know there are noise there other sounds are there so whether you want to maybe read with a background music something some instrument music or something or you want a peace calm atmosphere find out what kind of atmosphere you like what kind of sound pattern you want in the back light mostly as is light soft light should be soft if it is a bright light uh, it will be pinching to the eyes the light coming from top is good front uh, top uh, and uh, top sometimes good but if you have front light it's not uh, you know distracting if you have light from the back thing that from your back it will you know fall on the box so if you have back light which is soft that will be very comfortable light so look for the light which is very comfortable for your eyes also look at the screen size if you are reading on tablets or if you look at the uh, other things like your glasses and all which makes it comfortable for you read so the more comfortable you are the better your reading will be look at for look for things that you want around you know reading place you want a dictionary a mobile phone if you are using a mobile phone which is one of the great distractors try to switch up the data so that you don't get disturbed time and again with the coming of the messages and notifications if you want to use a tab laptop be careful not to use unnecessary internet because they'll be disturb disturbing it so if you want to read them on mobile screen or tablet or laptop you switch up you download the text switch up the data and then start reading if you want some water juice eat tables you keep it around so that you don't need to get an excuse to you know get out of your reading place and go to other place and you forget a reading or you postpone reading so keep all these things around your place so that you can concentrate don't overeat if you eat more you will feel lazy and sleepy keep a water bottle which will give you energy take tea if you are feeling a bit drowsy you can take tea to keep active uh if you get frustrated or if you you know uh, don't start following it uh, don't you know get out or leave reading don't give up reading you can count from 100 to 1 and tell yourself that uh, you can be anxious later now it's time to understand you can aim for understanding and not memorization and say that you don't have to understand everything if you can understand some basics of that it's okay so when you lose track calm down meditate a bit count 100 to 1 and say that you are going to do that and you'll do that then use a reading hat uh, that's very good i think i've got a reading cap uh, you can have uh, you can see maybe you are looking at around uh, what you can have keep on this hat and once this hat is on that means it's your reading time and you are going to completely focus on reading you are not going to do any other activity so once this reading hat is on nothing is going to stop you from reading uh, so uh, keep a hat kind of thing okay or reading cap kind of thing if you cannot have have this kind of cap you can have a paper uh, uh hat kind of thing just uh, it's a uh, maybe or you can have a uh, an imaginary cap kind of thing say that now the cap is on or now the hat is on and once it is on now i am going to focus on reading and forget about everything else they will wait for me uh the reading is speed now reading is speed is measured by how many words you can read in a given moment there are many courses that run around the world to develop your reading speed i'll talk a few basics of that first how to calculate your reading speed if you want to calculate your reading speed pick up a book start you know take take the time look at the time start reading a few pages maybe two three pages and then count the average number of words in one line maybe five times you can count and uh, five times how many words you have read and divide it by five to count the average number of words that is there in one line and then count number of lines and multiply it by number of average words so that or very simple count on the number of words that you have read in given time so if uh, you can read say around 700 words in 5 minutes 
calculate your reading speed. Divide 700 by uh, 5 and then that will be your reading speed. So you have read 700 words in 5 minutes, your reading speed will be 100 something. So like this. You calculate how, what is your, uh, you know, reading speed and uh, whether it needs a, a kind of needs to improve or develop. Because you, many a time it happens that in the exams like CATS and many many students they they complain that they have very less reading speed. They cannot manage time. You have a long passage given and two or three questions, and that kind of passages are more in number. So this way you will be able to uh, read less if you don't have a good reading speed. So you can work on the reading speed. I'll talk some of them. Average uh, uh, reading for memorization, average speed for memorization is 350 words. Average reading for learning is 100 to 150 words. Average speed for reading for comprehension is 200 to 250 words. And when you say context, it's 400 to 700 words. Some people go to the extent of saying that the reading speed of novels sometimes maybe uh, 1500 words per minute or maybe a thousand words per minute. I've come across many people, some of them are my students, they could fix up the novel in three, four hours, maybe a day hardly. So well, how come that person or that student be able to finish up reading the novel in a day and others will take a week? Certainly, reading speed is there. So how the person is going to do that? But if you can figure out how you can work on your reading speed and teach your reading speed, this will help. Uh, some of the barriers that decrease your reading speed are vocalizing the text. That means you are reading word by word and you are speaking it out. I have found I've done a bit results on this, and I found that many of my students, when I many many of the students, when who I you know, took for tests and all. I found around 30 to 40 percent of them when they read, I ask them to just read and they keep on speaking the words out. Their lips walk, they keep on vocalizing the text. So when you vocalize the text, what really happens is that you're limiting your reading speed to the speed of your lips, to the speed of your vocal cords, to the speed of your uh, organs of speech. And they, they uh, uh, act very, very, uh, they have a limited speed. Uh, your brain can act much, much faster than your lips and your vocal cords and your organs of speech. So if you can just train your eyes to look at the text and silently reading the text without vocalizing the text or without sub-vocalizing the text in your mind, then certainly your reading speed will increase. Uh, and consult the dictionary frequently. There are some tips and tricks to uh, understand the text in the or meaning in the context so you can understand the meaning in the given context that will be better. Don't select the wrong text and don't have the track. So these are some of the ways that uh, some of the barriers of your reading thing you can uh, avoid or which you can master by some practice. Some audio is at the background. Please mute your mic. The one whose mic is working. I can set the sound. Organizers, please look into this. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll go to the next. Uh, I think uh, there's one slide missing, something has happened. Uh, so, uh, how, can, how can you overcome uh, come those barriers? Once you want uh, the these are some of the barriers, you can start with selecting appropriate text. If you want to increase your reading speed, you can suggest your students or students if they are there, you can start with graded text. These graded texts are, uh, you know, simplified stories. They are uh, abridged versions. Abridged versions are simplified. The main novel is some has some other language, and the other writer has used a few selected number of words, and they have written those stories. They are graded texts. Uh, readers digest and similar kind of stories have graded texts. So if you use, and there are many levels, level one, two, three, four, five. Level one might have maybe a thousand words used for a story like uh, uh, Charles Dickens's novels. Uh, they do have uh, maybe 1500 words, they get 
3 or level 3 has 2000 words so the uh, higher grade you go the more number of words uh, they use to write the story so you can start with the first graded text or, uh, and then practice it uh, because the language will not be barrier vocabulary will not be a barrier you will be able to read it very very faster uh, so you can start reading the graded text uh, or you can also reread the previous stories if you have read some story earlier and you want to increase your reading speed because you already know the story if you reread the story or reread the text maybe if you're a student of class 12 start with class 8's story class, uh, class 8's uh, English textbook will have some story and that will be very very easy for you so there you can focus more on your reading speed try to read as fast as possible and uh, try to to focus on fastness and not in comprehension because you will be able to understand them without even without looking much of that will be kind of skimming and that will increase your reading speed then <clears throat> you can look for the subtitles of the movies movies might have some subtitles uh, when you watch a movie turn the subtitle on and try to look at the subtitles and, and don't look at the screen and try to read every detail that is given, given in the subtitle go with the speed of subtitles so if you go with the speed of subtitles you might increase your reading speed because they come with the speed of dialogues and they are certainly a good exercise for your reading speed then you can start with reading uh, newspapers and newspapers have things arranged in columns you don't see things from left to right they're arranged in columns because they want you to read certain things per fixation you can read one line you can read vertically from up to down and not left to right you have three four words in one uh, columns first one line in one column try to read them together because instead of reading word by word if you read them in chunks you'll be able to do it better i'll tell you how you can do that you can start with reading certain phrases a phrase like according to in spite of as soon as because of so on the other end if you when i'm reading i'm reading them word by word when we but when you look most of you if you see it on the screen you will be reading them at one word at one phrase at one glance so if you can practice on reading these phrases you will be able to develop a bit fast reading speed and or looking more than one word per fix session so if you can develop uh, looking at uh, more than one word per fix session and uh, maybe with some more phrases your eyes will be trained to look at more than one word and then maybe newspaper can help <coughs> I think uh, how newspapers work, I, uh, then uh, you have this column-wise arrangement and then try to read more than together. In any way, you have to train your eyes to look at more than one word because if you read word by word, you are limiting your reading speed. So newspapers, you can pick up the favorite column if you don't like reading, boring, or maybe political news, you're interest in, uh, interested in movies or in entertainment-related news, you look at that city news or sports or your favorite column so look at that and try to read uh, more than one word at a glance so this reading more than one word per fixation is a great help to develop your reading speed this way things are arranged in three columns like this newspapers try to read one the words that come in one column together uh, of course when i was talking about graded book if you have those graded book or old books that you have already read as uh, story books there you can have uh, you can draw that you can use a pencil and a scale and you can draw two lines and try to look for more than one word per fixation or you can just keep in mind that there is an imaginary lines there are two imaginary lines and the whole text in three are three in three columns and i have to read text of one column the text that come in one column at one class that may maybe in the beginning it may sound challenging but with practice you will be able to master that so this way you can uh, read graded text for wider uh, visual span one mantra for increasing your reading speed the more you read the more you practice uh, the better it will be some people say that uh, reading once uh, like uh, reading kind of uh, uh, drill will help you read it once go back read the same content again first time you have understood second first time it may take 20 minutes the same text you try to read in 10 minutes in the next time so this way uh, also your reading speed will work so anyway you have to read more the more you read 
<clears throat> the better your vocabulary will be and the more your reading speed will be. And we have seen a sharp decline in reading practice uh, in our young learners. So I think we need to find out uh, some mechanism to help them read so that they should be able to develop good reading speed. There is also a very sharp decline in reading of novels and stories in the young learners. They are more into reading shorter, shorter text messages and then, then they don't read novels and stories. So there has been a decline in moral values and other things because we learn to live good in a good manner through these novels and stories and there is a decline in that. So we have to find out certain ways to help these learners, these young learners come up and read some of these things. I think I'll talk of a uh, uh, few things. Uh, PQ, uh, three out of reading, they say uh, this is one of the tricks that work. These PQ, three R is, uh, you know, stands for reviewing the text, questioning, reading, reviewing and deciding. Before you start reading something, you need to preview. You can just look at the text back of the, you know, book, uh, maybe forward of that, introduction of that, writer's information, a few things that are related to that, how to read the book, some technical vocabulary. So that's called previewing. Every chapter has some information. You can look at the beginning, introductory part. Sometimes they have concluded the similar information. You can look at the bold, uh, you know, uh, headline, you know, bold uh, uh, keywords that is given over there, or maybe uh, main ideas that are set in bold letters. So these are previewing. This previewing help you make up your mind what kind of text you are going to read, and uh, and uh, they may give uh, build up curiosity for you to read. So you before you start reading, preview the text. You can have some questions. If this is the text, what what may be the there? You can have certain questions in your mind, and in order to find the answers of those questions, you can you may ask the question what the text is going to be about. <clears throat> uh, how many characters may be there? Uh, will there be just two characters or four characters? Or what the event is about? Because you have already previewed the text, you may have some questions in the mind that may help you read and understand that. Then you read and try to find out what questions you have, whether they are true. And whether you can answer those, whether you got answers of those questions. Once you have read the text, you review it, go to the text back, look at the keywords, look at the main ideas, look at the supporting details. Because if you review within 24 hours, you will be able to remember it more. So review the text and then try to recite. Maybe you try to sum up the whole thing in 10 words or 20 words, whatever you have read. Maybe you can write a small summary of that. So these things, reviewing, questioning, reading, reviewing and reciting are a few things that help you remember and learn the text better. You can ask questions, different kind of questions to find facts and uh, maybe uh, understand the text better. You have questions like yes, no questions and WH questions. I think I'll discuss about them uh, in the next few slides. I think I'll skip. Uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, less time, so I'll skip to some things. And then finally move to a few last few points. Uh, Rupana ma'am, how much time have I got now? If there is any... Yes, yeah, sir, you okay, have I 10 do. more minutes, sir. You have 10 more minutes, sir. 10 more minutes. Okay, I think I'll do that. Yeah, I'll go to some of the skills that is related to uh, uh, working on the text. So reading should not be a... Uh, you know, one uh, way reading. They say that reading is a passive activity where you look at the text and you try to understand the things. The reading should be a two way communication between the reader and the writer. The writer has encoded the message and you are going to decode it. And like when you have conversation, you when you are talking to someone, the person speaks and you listen. And then you nod, you Give some feedback, and then the person understand that you are, you are, uh, you're, you're listening, you're understanding it. Similarly, so and then sometimes you ask some questions, and then the speaker replies. So that is a role reversal in communication. So sender or a speaker becomes listener, and a listener becomes a speaker. Similarly, in reading also there should be a role 
rehearsal. Reader should be writer, and writer, uh, you know, writer may not be reader, but at least reader should assume both the roles. Once uh, at one point of time you're reader when you're reading uh, the text, and maybe at some point of time once you have done something, you reverse your role to the writer. You try to mark certain text. You have read some te some text. Try to interact with the text. Try to talk to the text. What message the writer wanted to convey? Try to understand that, and then you can use a highlighter or a pen to underline, or you can use certain things to circle the things, or put certain symbols like question mark or maybe a happiness mark, emoji or something like that. Or you can sequence things using numbers and all. So you can use certain text marking things to underline and highlight the important key ideas and important points that is given given in the text. Of course, uh, text marking will help you review easily. So you should mark text in order to review the content, in order to remember, remember it. Uh, uh, don't read, uh, don't uh, start marking the text in the very first reading because if you are reading it for the first time, you may not know what is the main idea, what are the supporting details. So when you want to mark the text, the text marking should be done at the second reading. So it is a part of close reading, uh, intensive reading. So there you read it once and then after reading, go back, start reading it now using a highlighter and there you can highlight main ideas. You can also keep different color you know, highlighters for different things. You can use maybe a yellow highlighter for main ideas, green for supporting details, maybe uh, some other color, shaded color for quotations and all. So use different colors to find out what the main information, what are the supporting details. Uh, don't highlight many things. If you highlight many things, you will not be able to read them. Highlight just a few things. You should not highlight, you should never highlight more than 20% of the text. What is written over there? If you highlight more than 20%, it will be over highlighting and you will not be able to uh, uh, read them or review them properly. What you should not mark, you should not mark quotations, you should not mark examples, you should not mark illustrations. You should mark only the definitions, keywords or ideas, main words, supporting details and all content words you can highlight. Then annotate on the text. Annotating uh, may, uh, the way, uh, is one of the ways of uh, you know recording your uh, uh, response to the text. Here you can use a pen and near to the text where you have read something, you can write a few things. Gone are the days when people used to say that, you know, don't write, keep books neat and clean. Now the more colored, more highlighted, more marked and more annotated a book is, the better the reader is concerned, uh, is considered. Of course, you cannot uh, highlight or annotate a borrowed book. Uh, you need to own the book, you need to get a book or buy a book and then you can start annotating it. So annotating is writing your questions. If you have any question that you have in your mind, you can write the question over there to find out the answer from a friend, from a teacher or something like that. Uh, you don't write much bigger. You have the space at the left, right, top and bottom margins and you have space in between two paragraphs. So you can use these blank areas to record your responses by using symbols and some words. You can also paraphrase the ideas that you want to simplify. If you use some dictionary, you can also write the definition of the words that you wish near the text. You can use certain abbreviations, for example, IM for important, REM for if you want to remember the text. You you devise your strategy as to what kind of symbols you want to use, but then you write them so that you should be able to locate the information very quickly and remember it for a longer, longer time. You can also gloss it. You know, that gloss is like writing them in your own words near the text. You can gloss it at the bottom or at left or right margin of the text. Uh, Uh, you can also make notes of, of whatever learning you have. Uh, you can prepare notes and many times they also ask you to make notes of that. Of that. There is a difference between note-taking and note-making. Note-taking is when you have someone is dictating something to you and you are writing it without 
planning properly whatever comes to you and you are writing it's a note taking note making uh, is a very systematic activity when you have to read a review select the information to to make notes and then you organize those information in proper structure so that to maintain the main text structure and then transfer information using your own words or some of the keywords that you use in the that uh, that are there in the text uh, there are a few formats of note making one is outline or linear method when you have the title at the top and followed by title you have uh, the main points or main headings they call it headings or uh, main ideas so you have title main idea and it's supported so title main idea supporting one two three details then another main idea supporting details this is a very structured way of making notes and a good for the students uh, mostly in the schools and colleges because they can remember the sequence of the uh, you know sequence of the text. They can uh, make it uh, in a systematic manner for their study or revision purposes. That's when the examination also they have note making kind of thing. Then you have a mind map or spider diagram. Here you have to read overall text and then you have to find out what is the main idea, what are supporting details. Maybe in this you have you can see it on the text uh, something related to professional development. You have five points and every point some supporting details. Some supporting details may also have some points. So this is a kind of uh, diagram, visual diagram that you are make, making. You they call it mind map and a spider diagrams. So there are many softwares that may help you draw the mind map. You can have a brainstorming kind of thing also. Center you have uh, keywords and then left right every every side you have arrows to figure out or to write down the important information related to that. So these mind maps can also be one most important part of reviewing the text easily and remembering it. Then this is one of the best approach used by some people to make and read. This is called three column notes. Here you write notes uh, in the notes section. You have you can see the whole page is divided into three parts. The center part you have notes where you write notes according to as you wish, maybe linear method, outline method, any method that you write. Then in the left, you write some question cues or keywords. So what are those questions? What are those cues that led you to make those notes? So you write those question cues in the left and then you write the summary of the whole question cue and notes together at the bottom. This is a very good uh, way of making notes. I wish I had got some more time to give you some examples, but uh, you can see this is a very popular technique used by people to remember text for a longer time while reading. And then you have assessment of reading. I think I'll take just one or two minutes. I'll be very quick. You have assessment of reading where you have uh, reading questions and all, uh, and you need to understand those answers. They are called reading comprehension, and it's very common now in all the examination they ask it. You have different kind of questions to answer based on the reading. The questions are different uh, on the basis of a structure. They may be fill in the blanks question. They may be descriptive questions. Uh, where you have to write a full sentence, then maybe yes, no, or true, false questions. They have become very common now because the possibility of answering them is just 50% down, 50% down. Then you have MCQs, another very popular question form. So they are based on the structure, these four question patterns are there. And based on contents, you have factual questions which ask you to give, provide some facts. Inference, which want you to understand the text and draw inferences, draw some conclusions. Then anticipating questions is an open-ended question where they ask you to conclude the story or write the story or change the end of the story. Something that you can do on your own, guess something that may happen or apply that to your real life. Then you have evaluative questions where they want you to judge the, the maybe a character evaluative question analysis of a character in a story or something like that or some event. So you have to apply your logic to find out whether that's a true or false or what kind of thing that you evidence you get in the story. So evaluate the things. And they are, then you have critical thinking questions when you have to apply your knowledge to real life to think critically whether the statement given by the writer is true or false or you can apply your own way to analyze that. So uh, the question which is I uh, have also drawn some arrow, the question which is filling the blanks and factual is the easiest to understand. 
the question which is factual and MCQ is the difficult one. Similarly, the question which is factual is easy and the question which is critical thinking is difficult. So difficulty level increases from top to down and left to right. So the MCQ which is a critical thinking question in the last box, last box, bottom box at the right. So the question which is MCQ and critical will be most challenging question. You need to practice some of these questions so that you can answer, you can find out answer of these questions. I think we need a separate session on how to answer these questions. Since this session was uh, one of the, uh, you know, one of the small sessions, I just drew the outline of what are the things that can be covered in a part of reading. And reading is not as simple as people think and that's why they are not able to get the things properly. So reading should be taken seriously and there are many skills. I even skipped some of the skills. There are many sub skills of reading which are required. Every skill needs some training. Every skill needs practice. The more you practice, the better accuracy you will get and the more you know, uh, text you will be able to read, the faster reader you will be, the good reader you will be. So um, I think it's time we should uh, take reading seriously and uh, not to stop reading the text because now we have come to the, you know, we have brought ourselves to the position of uh, not reading properly. We are very happy with, with just reading a few you know, text messages that comes in your our social media sites and uh, skim. So uh, reading has re been reduced to reading a few text messages on a mobile screen to skimming some text on the Google screen or on the you know so on these search engines. And then we read just just required information and. We have almost forgotten the habit of reading longer, longer text like novels, stories, and that too. When we read shorter texts, also we don't have proper techniques and proper plans to read it, proper skills to read it. So, if you practice some of these skills, I think your reading will be better. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, thank sir, you, thank sir. you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you a wonderful again, presentation. Yeah, yeah, it's question. a wonderful presentation. There are a lot of uh, compliments for you, sir. Uh, so uh, I uh, would just like I'll to... The, now I'll open the floor for questions. Participants, be ready. Yeah. Uh, sir, here there are a few questions for you, sir. Sir, can yeah. you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm there, I'm there, just a minute. Yeah, I'm there. Yes, yeah, sir. Please, please ask the questions. Uh, sir, here there is a question, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. M. Marimutu has got a question for you, sir. He has asked a question. The question is, how to improve the reading skills of slow learners whose IQ level is very low? <laughs> I think uh, uh, they need a special attention. If their IQ level is very low, two things will matter. They have, they might have limited, very limited vocabulary, and they are very limited to the world. So they should start with very simple stories, very simple graded text. Uh, the text that have uh, that may have uh, may, some of the text has 100 or 150 words, and the story should be very very simple, related to family, related to the things that the child sees and on and all. So if they start with simple text, great simple text with limited vocabulary and something that the child understands, and then gradually, if the child gets confidence in reading one story, one simple story, the child will be. In just to read the second. So if you if you give a challenging text to this kind of child, the child will certainly uh, be not ready to read even our next story. So you will start with simple story, graded story, and then gradually move to some other stories. Give some motivation to the child. Maybe a small trophy or something when the child comes up with the answer to a question. So maybe psychologically you need to work. Sir? Sir? Are you there, sir? 
He has joined the room, sir. We'll be back in a minute. Hello, sir. Guess there is a technical snag. I guess, sir. Sir. Oh, yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. I'm back. I think there was some disconnection issues. Yeah, that's okay, sir. That's okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, so I was saying that we start with a graded, simple text, uh, give some motivation to the child so that the child feels happy when the child reads something, and start with limited vocabulary and maybe introduce one or two vocabulary every day. So this way the child should be interested in reading. Yeah. So there is another question, sir, from Priyanka P. Her question is, can reading assessment in students improve through pictorial orientation? I repeat the question again, sir. Can reading uh, yes. assessment in students improve through pictorial orientation? Uh, I think, yeah, uh, I, I'll uh, uh, start with whether you I'll, I'll try to understand your question. Pictorial orientation, you try to train the students using certain pictures. Maybe if you uh, give the child some, what do you, is, is she there? Pictorial orientation, I want, whether you want, can she speak? Uh, Priyanka, Ms. Priyanka, can you request to talk now? Ms. Priyanka, Ms. Priyanka, are you there? Uh, yeah. What 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 I want is that she wants to give them a, a maybe graphical story, the, the story which has some pictures, some you know maybe a comic kind of a story. Uh, if you want to assess the child uh, through pictures and all, like you give a picture and ask the child to write it, will be a reading kind of uh, it will be a writing kind of activity. But then that's good because the child should be able to think. Now, two things you need to understand. First, if you give them illustrated books and pictorial graphic novels or graphic story, the child will be very, very interested to read. So you have to give training to these kind of things, graphic novels or graphic stories, so that the child should be able to read. And then if you assess them using pictorial narratives, you give them some uh, maybe a, a graphic illustration and want the child to write about that, the child should be able to write as well. So pictorial narratives are good provided they are well managed as a teacher to, to make use of that, how the teacher wants the child to respond to. Thank you. Yes. So next question, there is a question from Mr. Faisal. The question is, could you suggest some dictionaries for different age groups? Uh, uh, I don't know for young uh, for young ones. Many I uh, think if you can find out the dictionary that has uh, uh, if you are uh, thinking of English language or bilingual dictionary, if you are any other, uh, if you want it for English language, uh, for them if you can find the dictionary which is there in mother tongue. That dictionary may be word in English and uh, uh, you know definition in mother tongue. That is good for young children. Uh, I, there may be publishers around you, so you try to find out a dictionary in your mother tongue for young learners. Uh, Oxford's Intermediate Learners Dictionary is there that you can find out for class 8 onwards, class 8 onwards, Oxford Intermediate Learners is there. And then for Oxford's Advanced Learners for class 12 onwards. So for class 8 to 10, you can use intermediate learners and class 12 onwards, you can have Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. For a, uh, 
12 onwards to any age group this oxford advanced learners dictionary is the best one that you can that everyone must have a copy of that because it keeps on updating very good and it has lots of other similar features that uh, that add to reading the words uh, just definitions and the words there are many other things to read too so you can uh, go for these three i think for young ones you can go for uh, uh, you know english to mother tongue where definitions are in mother tongue for young for the adolescents or class 8 to 10 or 7 8 to 10 you have intermediate learners dictionary oxfords and then for class 12 onwards oxford advanced learners dictionary these three i suggest yeah thank you sir and the next question from sarika can you suggest some measures to create interest in reading among the new uh, new generation teenagers <laughs> uh this is a challenge everyone is facing new generation teen teenagers you know we need to uh, send them a stories through whatsapp <laughs> or or other social media platforms they are more into texting so if you can uh, change their habit of reading text to longer text through the platform that they are very interested in they are interested in social media sites they are interested in blogs they are interested in micro blogs facebook and so uh, and so so uh, you know if you can have a uh, illustrated or very graphically arranged a nice story uh, posted on facebook and the teacher may be uh, using maybe either a blog where the, the teacher posts maybe one a story in a couple of days or two days or uh, maybe a week so one a story the teacher very simple you create a blog you post one a story and give it to the students and ask them to give feedback about the story so if you can use their way of uh, you know reading now the way they are the platform that they are using for better reading or for uh, reading stories then that will be better some of them are maybe interested in books but reading books has declined that doesn't mean that we do not dis we should discourage them if you can bring some colorful you know books uh, to them instead they search for it you bring and you give it to them give them as come in you know, supplement in the class and then ask them to keep it on the table or somewhere so if they have text around them they might develop this reading habit i you can also form a book club i tried with this and this really works so you can have a book club in your class uh, and then you give a challenge to them the one who comes with the story or who tells the story in the, in the best way will get some reward or you can have inter group competitions so every group has one one book to read and they will come and compete with each other in telling the story and the one that tells in the, in the best way that group gets some motivation so, you know some reward so that way if you have these kind of things every week one class for group reading something like this they'll be interested to read because that will be a challenge for them to to come up with certain things so either use the medium if you want to read individually average student read it as medium if you want to read them in a class use a group reading skill even online group reading is possible you can divide the whole class into some groups and give uh, you know one a story to one group uh, that way they can read it online as well so use the medium that they are comfortable with to you know for, for their reading purpose and development of their reading skills okay thank you sir sir the sandapurni mm -hmm. sedu would like to know about your opinion on audio books are they a good way to get young learners interested in books can we then make them read later that's uh, a question i think uh, uh, audio books are good for uh, listening practice and i don't uh, think uh, audio books can be a good way of introducing them to reading because if they listen to first thing is the most of the audio books are uh, uh, abridged so the writer uses simple words they don't have complete word, you know the the authentic text is there so that the text is abridged so it's simplified the second is that if they start uh, listening to it the attention span is very short they'll hardly re uh, listen to the audio books i have I've done some experiment with audio books at my institute the maximum attention span for audio books is 10 minutes they cannot listen to more than 10 minutes because just one way it becomes more passive than even reading you cannot do anything to to audio books so even though it is getting popular the attention span is shorter so if you can find some audio supplements 
uh, audio books can be used for supplements where they can have some interest about that about a particular book so uh, maybe a small 10 minutes or shorter documentary and then let the child listen and then go to the main reading text so it can be a supplement to the actual reading but actual reading should follow and audio books are more passive than instead of audio books if you can have graphic books where pictures are there many of the books are now graphically illustrated so if you can have graphic books they are better audio books are also good getting popular but then they should be supplements and not main readings yeah sir thank you sir so next question is from mr ashwin kumar uh, the question is what's the good way to start reading prose or verse uh, fiction or non fiction I think uh, uh, if you want, uh, it, it depends on people. I think if you start with fiction, that will be easy. Non-fiction is more challenging and more pragmatic, uh, more day-to-day -day life related. So if you start with simple stories, you will be interested to know what happens. Start with, a, uh, you also look at the uh, level, uh, age level. If they are, uh, you know, adult ones, start with uh, novels and all. If they're young ones, start with fables, fairy tales and all. So look at the level of the learner level of the reader and I start with some fiction and then go to non-fiction because fiction has more interest more fun element than non-fiction second thing if you want uh, reading to start you know poetry related thing poetry you need more close reading so I think you cannot start if you want to develop reading speed starting with poetry is not a good way even if you start with reading poetry start with narrative poems which are the stories of poetry like uh, maybe you have uh, a simple poetry of uh, the, the ancient mariner or some other poetry which is story so those story the, the narrative poetry may be good but shorter poetry with compact meaning a very close analysis that kind of poetry will uh, not be good in the beginning to start reading activity. So I says start reading with a story or fiction in the beginning and gradually move to non-fiction. Poetry should come at the end. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, there is one more question from Mr. Poon then, right? Uh, are there any faster comprehension techniques for emerging readers? Uh, can I uh, listen to the question again? One page. Uh, are there any faster comprehension mm -hmm. techniques for emerging readers? There is new <laughs> readers, those are new people. So they want uh, some comprehension techniques. Yeah. How to comprehend it? Uh, yeah, there are there yeah, are yeah. two three techniques. I think I skipped those slides. Uh, one of them is how to find my, my main ideas. That's one thing. Uh, let them uh, let them read it and let them uh, find out the key words. There are two kind of words called content words, a structure or function words. Let them uh, find out what are the content words, what are the main ideas. Maybe every sentence has a key sentence, and that every paragraph has a key sentence, and that has one main idea, and the other ideas are related to that. So finding the main idea and finding its supporting details so that is one of the most important thing that they should start with. Uh, give them a paragraph and say that just. Uh, Tell the paragraph in one or two words. What? Tell the summary of the paragraph in one two words. Define the paragraph in one or two words. They'll come up with the main idea. Then say that what are the other words that you know support these ideas. So that way they should be able to gradually start comprehending paragraph. So asking them to find main ideas, supporting details, and then creating a map around them will help these learners find out these things. Uh, find out the main uh, essence of the of the reading comprehension and then you have the questions in the beginning you can have some factual questions which can uh, make them just try it down facts and eg then gradually moving to the difficult uh, questions that like critical questions and all so starting from factual questions which they can re uh, you can also have a smaller paragraph and one or two questions maybe five or six sentence paragraph followed by one or two questions so if you start with like a smaller paragraph smaller sections then they may get interest in reading longer sections as well so this way finding main idea supporting details in a smaller paragraph can help them develop comprehension skills and that too in the beginning there should be less challenging questions like factual questions thank you thank you so much sir